topic our conversation from Ephesians 2, 4 to 8. But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, next, made us alive with Christ even when we're dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. Keep that line, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Again, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. <laughs> For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Now think about this, stay on this for a while. And there are three operative words I want us to pull out. There is saved, there is grace, and there is faith. Alright? That you are saved by grace through faith. Right? So it is important to keep that in mind because what is grace? Grace actually came from a word, a Greek word called um, charis, which is free gift or gift. And in the in the in the Hebrew, there is also two words that is transcribed as grace. Uh, one of them is called nun, and nun is actually um, titled new beginning. It's it, it has a number eight. You know, um, they have all this number thing going on. So number number eight speaks of new beginning, and there is also number fifty which is also one of the transcription, and it means the year of Jubilee. And in the year of Jubilee, what plays out in the year of Jubilee is that if you, are, you have slaves, every 50 years, they are free. So the interesting part is even if your slavery started one year to 50 years, you are as free as him who has done 49 years into 50. All right? So Jubilee became a year of freedom. And Jubilee was now one in 50 years. But what people didn't understand and what Christ came to accomplish for us was that he became our year of jubilee every year. So we're not waiting for 50 years to live in freedom. We live in freedom now. So grace is saying that everything we have accomplished is a gift from God. See, your salvation, you contributed zero. Everything, your, your salvation, your redemption, right? Your justification, everything was actually based on the finished works of Christ. When he screamed, it is finished, on the day he died, that's what he meant. That he had put paid, he had paid in full for the transgression, the wrath that God was, pour, had, or was supposed to pour on sin. He took it for a place, he became a replacement. So what you don't understand is that you cannot qualify, you cannot end it, he ended it. If your salvation and your Christianity is you trying to end something that is already yours, there is no more grace that can be given, grace has been poured, grace has been given. What you need to do is to settle yourself in it. So let me give you an instance. Let's say you are here, right? And you're battling, let's say you're battling for vacation with your girlfriend. So after every performance, you cry. <laughs> you understand? You cry and say, Lord, you know, guys, you've got this journey now. Let's not even pretend that we have. So, am I alone? What's going on? So, but you know, no, but back in some trouble. See. <laughs> Something that is grace. <laughs> but, guys, if not for grace, the Lord has washed us in him. But, you know, even as a Christian, there was always a bit of a struggle. So, after you, you didn't intend to fall. You didn't intend to fall. It so happened that things happened. <laughs> Alright, but, you know, the, one of the presence of the Holy Spirit is that after, after a fall, you're, you're really broken. <laughs> Yeah, like, Lord, this shouldn't have been the case. Lord, you can't give us a, a, a testimony. And you know, even way back on campus, there's a pastor that showed up one day, the pastor of the fellowship. And the guy summoned everybody to come to the front. He said, today we've had our day in the sun. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> before then, he was just crying, and he stood up and said, comfort all ye men. So all the guys were, just, were with someone like, alarmed to the slaughter. OK, we didn't know what we were going for. Show up still. And he said, lift up your right hand. Yeah. Put it on your chest. Lift up your left. When well, like this. Say, Father, the day I visit the porn site, let me die. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> we froze. Because nobody knew where, what was happening. And guess where the guy went to before that time? Of all the places to go was um, 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 Safira and Ananias. 
he read that scripture, so he already created an atmosphere of fear. You understand? So he had, and that was the perfect scripture to bring me. So I saw people struggling, struggling with the covenant. Like, honestly, that day I said, Papa, I don't, this covenant, I don't know. And guess what? Even after all the covenant, you still come back. And um, you forgot your child at your girlfriend's house. When it was 10 p.m., your phone had one bang. The next day, you have you need to pick it. But it so happened that she just she was already in the bathroom when you got there, and she came quickly to open the door. And you decided to charge the phone in the house instead of going. And, and that was the last we heard. But let's 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 stay on grace. But my point is. My point is, all of these struggles are a product of wrong theology. Yeah. I believe 100%. If you have a revelation of grace and you have the Holy Spirit, you walk in righteousness. Sure. So people that get scared that all of you that are saying finished, the Lord has done it, all of you one of these days will not get it right. No, my fear is, those that are in law and legalism is a, is a terrible place to be. Yeah. They don't have, there's something called joy of salvation. Yes. He didn't say joy, sorrow of salvation. So the day you hear anything and it's not, it's not bringing freedom and joy to you, it's not the gospel. It's not good news. The gospel is supposed to remind you of who you are in God. Because there was a miracle that happened at birth. Oh, yeah. So grace was God dealt with sin. He dealt it with it one time. So sin, you don't have a sin problem. You have a mind you renewal problem. So God has sorted your nature. The problem is that as you walk in the spirit, right? That's what I will go there. We'll go to Romans. Let's go to Romans. Please. Romans. <laughs> it is. He took your place. Romans 8. Romans 8. Um, from verse 2. But there's something. So, you know, what? I, before now, I also used to get worried. Like, okay, if we start dwelling on what Christ has done. Because, my brother, I have, we've lived it. You go to church, they'll give you seven keys to breaking free from masturbation. You keep your seven keys. And it's after I realized the keys didn't open any door. So you go back and you meet another pastor and say, they are no longer seven, they are ten. Three more. You take more keys and there are no doors. What do you realize? You have more chains around your neck. Because you don't live from outside in. The greatest gift of grace is a transformed heart. And out of a transformed heart, you will see the fruits of God in your life. So the fruits will come. But two things, you have a focus problem. So long as you are holding that sin, like God, this thing, you cannot be seen consciously. And there be righteousness manifest. I don't know how the word works, but you cannot focus on how broken and how bad you are and see the fruit of God's life flourish inside of you. It comes by just being on who He says you are. Dwell on who you are. Trust me, I am so obsessed about my righteousness consciousness. Like I'm like, even when I some days Lagos can be quite can be a yeah, tough one to yeah. live in. The days you decide to fast, the enemy will show. You understand? But you will not fall, brother. You're meant to be strong. So even if you're seeing all the privileges around and suddenly there are no, more, there are no longer clothes in Lagos. You understand? And you're like, no, the, the heat is getting intense. Like yesterday we had a program here. After all, I tried to go home because at some point I didn't know whether what was on display. I was I I I, I spoke in tongues for a season. But the tongues wasn't having its way. For wisdom. Wisdom. Because yeah, if you're if you're dieting. You can't keep chocolate at every turn in your house and say, I'm on a diet. <laughs> when you talk, I'm on a diet. By the time you chew too bad, you understand? You know what's happening to you. So at the end of the day, what we established on Thursday before we go to, guys, you're still in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> in the picture. But, um, it has a lot to say, but endure with me. <laughs> but what we established that there's something called the already and the not yet. So when you got born again, there are three things here. There is, you have, uh, you're a spirit, you have a soul and you live in the body. That's the three side, the three dimensions of man. So the, the spirit of man is completely saved. So man is fully saved, fully redeemed, declared, completely justified. Your spiritual reality is not that you are. So there is a place to understand this because all scriptures are not for you. All scriptures are written for you, but not to you. All right, so we, we read from Mark 10, where the other guy came to Jesus at night. The guy sneaked in and said, oh, um, how did I get this new life? I've kept the law. The guy said, I have gone from my youth. I have kept the law. You know what Jesus did? Jesus, Jesus shocked me. Because Jesus knew grace, but he didn't give the man grace. 
His response was like, go ahead, go sell all you have. Then let's talk, come back. And I'm thinking, they said the man went away sorrowfully. It clicked in my mind. Whenever you come to God with love, God will give you love. And he will give you love, not to enslave you. He will give you love to show that you can't keep it. Because he will resist the proud. And law is about self-righteousness. But the, the humble he will attract. So when you shop in law, that's why our brothers that are in law, they will see more law. Because the law will always call up law. And he's doing that to be to see your flaws, to help you know that you will need to come to an end of yourself before you cannot assess grace. Only those who are broken can treasure grace. Like if you haven't come to the end of yourself, if you feel that there's still a strength in you to affirm, so spiritually you establish your faith. Your faith. And I was explaining that there are journeys to it, alright? So back in, in Isaiah, we, we saw that by his stripes we are healed. When you come down to Peter, he says by his stripes we were healed. So what was a present tense became a past tense. So who's senior? Peter's revelation of healing, senior Isaiah. Yeah. Yes. So Peter is saying your healing is in the past. Isaiah is saying your healing is something that is about to happen. He said, no, your healing is in the past. So if you approach Isaiah and say, Lord, I'm about to heal, you will not understand. And when you come to Peter, you approach your healing with gratitude. You're saying, Father, thank you because I am healed. I know it. I'm seeing it. There is no sickness in my body. You're affirming that which is. Because he healed you 2,000 years ago. So you're collecting and appropriating that healing. All right, you're not coming to seek it. So Isaiah can say, so people that are going to Old Testament, my brother, it has its context, but those are shadows, right? And they, they were spoken for a season, but that is not where you find your accurate position as a believer. Sure. You find your accurate position, not always in the red letter. Because even this moment, when Jesus was saying, go and sell all you have, my brother, go and sell everything and come, let's have a salvation for you. He wasn't written to you. He was written for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. When he told them, be perfect, as my father is perfect, he knew they could never keep perfection. He told them, oh, you're being perfect. They were struggling. Try it. But to us, he said, no, you're my, I'm your perfection. Embrace. So, the law, you're walking towards perfection. In grace, you're walking from perfection. In law, you're walking to become accepted. In, in grace, you're already accepted. Embrace. You're not walking from there. So, let it settle in your mind. Where you need to do your work now is the second level. So, he said, spiritually, you're sorted, right? Your, your mind now is where there is work. Because when you got born again, you didn't erase your memory. Your porn files are still loaded. And maybe your, your, your Yahoo products are still loaded. So all of those things are all there. And when you go born again, you lose calories. Your, your weight is still your weight. <laughs> all right? It, it, I mean, you didn't lose that. You didn't get born again. After I said, I've lost some weight. <laughs> the miracle was a spiritual one. That weight will hit the gym. Indeed, you hit the gym. So my point is, some people understand, you need to understand that you need to go and burn those fats. It's a gym problem. For your mind, your memory was already an accumulation of years and years of filth, information, indulgences. So you have to deal with it at that level. That's what Romans 12 2 gave us. That you renew your mind, all right? Renew your mind. They didn't say, I, the Holy Spirit, will renew your mind. The yeah. tax of a renewal of your mind is yours. So when you begin to pray, Holy Spirit, take my mind. No, my brother, what have you been reading? Yeah. All right, what have you been spending time with? Because what you exchange time with, you acquire. So your mind is, so whatever you're feeling in will now go to either strengthen your position of who you are or weaken you further. So if all you do on Netflix and or Game of Thrones, right? Yes, it was, a, it was a blast. But let's not even go there. You know. Let's not go there. Because some people have called us, which touch people will use Game of Thrones put for fire? They don't understand cultural renewal. But that's a conversation for another day. So my point is, if you feed your mind with all these things, you don't dwell on the world. You know what it said? Abide in me and I in you. Yeah. So in abiding, you are, you, are, you are taking on life. Intimacy produces strength because there's a reservoir of strength inside of you through the Holy Spirit. So I, I know that grace is a potential danger to those who don't have the Holy Spirit. To understand the gospel of grace without intimacy is to run the risk of abusing it. Because the Holy Spirit is the strength that can keep you and teach you. So if you don't have, when people tell me, no, 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 there's a work to be done, I said, you're in, you, you know why? You don't understand intimacy with the Holy Spirit. He's your, trust me, he walks in you to will and to do, right? See, intimacy is non-negotiable. When you understand that the Holy Spirit in you, God made that tremendous investment. He gave you grace and gave you the Holy Spirit. The Holy Grace without the Holy Spirit, my brother, trouble. But having grace and having the Holy Spirit, there is nothing that can stop you, all right? You know, I was, I, I do, okay guys, I'll say this. The righteousness of, the righteousness we now have 
is the quality of righteousness that God has. Because why? The righteousness we have is not self-righteous. We do not attain it. It came to us as a gift. So if, for instance, I'm, I have a, a, a song, and all of you have flash drive, I'm not having to put the song in all your flash, your, your flash drives, right? The same, when you open it, this, the same song in my original laptop is the same song in your flash drive. It's no less if it, so when God installs righteousness, the same quality of righteousness in God is the same quality of righteousness. Same gift. So God is not more righteous than you are. In fact, you need to understand that you share this. That's why he said you are a partaker of divine nature. So long as you don't identify with that nature, you never come to the fullness of who you are. Amen. Amen. This um, conversation around grace is one that I, I believe is a lifelong um, revelation. Um, and, and it truly is, you know, I think when I, when I received Christ, when I became aware of my walk with Christ, I always thought of the work of grace as, as, as the work that happened at the point of salvation. Um, and God has shown me that the work of grace is a continuous work. And so the same grace that saved is the grace that sustains, right? And so um, we must continue to seek um, a revelation of that grace. And I was sharing with um, Pastor Ferdi uh, earlier in the week and Eche how God's grace has abounded um, as I have become more and more aware of self-righteousness. So maybe I should put it this way. One of the biggest works of grace in my life is a recognition of self-righteousness mm. and veganism. Um, and you know, you were speaking a moment ago and you talked about when you come to God with law, he meets you there with law. And I thought to myself that that in itself is a work of grace, right? Um, it says in Romans 5 that where the law abounded, sin abounded. And in the past, I always thought, why would God you know, put the law in place so that sin would abound? And no, it's not so much that. It's that the, the recognition of law, the awareness of the law, or the presence of the law makes you aware of sin. But then it continues to say also that where sin abounded, grace, grace also abounded. And so there's an intersection there, right? Of where, where law and grace intersect, there's, there's awareness. Grace is an encounter, and the encounter leads to transformation. A work is done when you encounter grace. So at the point of salvation, the work of grace is making you, I think a couple things happen. One, and that scripture you read earlier, also in Colossians 2, also in Romans 5, this passage I'm referencing, where you see grace mentioned, preceding that, you hear about us being dead in our trespasses. You know, Pastor Freddie, you asked, when, when, when you accepted Christ, what did you do? You couldn't have done anything, you were dead. Yeah. So grace didn't come to make a bad person good. Grace came to make dead people alive, right? Wow. So we were dead and grace met us. We had nothing to do with the work. What, what can a dead man do to bring life to himself? Um, and so at the point of salvation, the dead become alive. At the point of salvation, there is recognition of sin. I believe also that throughout the life of a believer and the experiences I've had, um, God's graciousness is to make you constantly aware, is to put up the mirror of his grace so that you become aware of how short you have fallen, right? Um, for people, I, I don't know if there's anyone here who can relate to me, if you grew up in you know, a Christian environment, you were a good girl, a good boy, you know, in the family, it was always, why can't you be like your sister Simi? Everyone in church saying, look at Simi, you know, can't you be? <laughs> you know, what happens then from an early age is that you then take on this burden of meeting a standard. God reached down from on high and took hold of me and lifted me and that's what it felt like. Um, at the you know at the climax of, of this experience you know in my teenage years, God reached down from a high and took a hold of me. And so um, legalism and the law, they're not what God intended for us. But I believe that the present and I think Bible backs it up that even the existence of law um, allows us to recognize sin. And I'll leave it there. When, when, when I'm asked to speak about grace with people like Ted and Simi, I just wonder what I can say. Um, I was supposed to speak to the origin of um, of law, 
He's a lawyer, by the way. Um, how, how did it come about that law came in the first place? And then why is there a debate of law versus grace? Or in the first place, is there actually a debate between the law and grace? Growing up as a young Christian, I was somebody who liked life. I I am outgoing, so I really, yeah, and so really things that condition me. I'm not somebody who performs performs very well in regiments. So when you bring the law, generally and condition me, you actually punish me. So when I got born again, I would rather like say I like a Peter to a Paul because I felt Peter was an easier gospel and then give me the gospel of John and I'm good but then when you begin to give me the epistles of Paul I'm like this is a hard saying but interestingly law and grace are not on the opposite side as a matter of fact there is no debate between law and grace actually what we have is we have a debate between grace and sin and Jesus didn't come to rescue us from the law he came to rescue us from sin now, what happens is this. Jesus has become the remedy because where you have a law, there is a repercussion. So what Jesus became was Jesus became the repercussion for the law. So the fulfillment of the law that the Lord had given to engender communication. And let me start why the law came. Now, after the fall of man, there was a disconnect. Before the fall of man, God would come and commune with man in the cool of the evening. But then after man fell, there was a disconnect. And God's intention and purpose for man was to have that communion. He needed to restore that communion. And the, only, and the tool he could use to restore that communion after the time was to bring in law. And through law, the children of Israel were able to maintain some level of communion. But law in itself, like Freddie has said, was not absolute. And in real terms, we do not have an absolute law, even in the secular world. That's why every constitution has had amendments upon amendments upon amendments. And for those of you that are lawyers, you know, when you are quoting law, they would say, this particular law that was, you know, reviewed so, so and so did. And after 50 years of independence, we are still talking about reforming the Ni re re reviewing and reforming the Nigerian constitution. This speaks to the fact that you cannot, even in the secular circles, you can't have an absolute law. How much more of when you are you are, you are speaking within the context of God? And so, the first law that came that God brought in itself could only work out repercussion. And I will share with Fedi that that first law would bring, um, would, would come to repercussion. But God now had to develop a new template that would give you justification. And then this new law that he brought, brought forgiveness. And like I said, it works from inside to the outside as opposed to the other laws that gives you conditions of rules, do's and don'ts. And so that was how law came, and then law could not, law in man in itself could not fulfill, could not live by that law. So God needed to reform what he had given, and that reformation became the person of his son, Jesus Christ, who came by way of grace. To take us to a higher level of performance of this, because his son now fulfills the law, and then his son lives in us. And because the son has fulfilled the law, and because the son is the fulfillment of the law and is in us now, we have in turn become, we have been able to what, fulfill the same law. Because Christ lives in us. Yeah. And Christ is the word of God. And the word of a king is no less a king than the king himself. Praise the Lord. Okay, um, there's this short clip and I want us to watch it. Uh, lights off, please. So let's get the lights off. It's, it's a two minutes clip yeah, of, um, they call it good ometer. So imagine that this is the last, uh, this is this is judgment day in this. It's, it's a bit of a funny clip, but I think, let's go. If you have the voice.
Next. File, please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. This way. Next. File, please. Okay, I admit it. I did a lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like one time I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. File, please. Impressive. Oh, yeah. I devoted my entire life to make this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa. I donated blood every month. And I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the article. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. Was baptized as a baby? Take American Express, right? Next. File, please. Whoa. Somebody's been busy. Well, let's get this over with. Sorry, um, I didn't know he was with you. Okay, step on the scale. Not you. Him. Hey, wait a minute. That is totally not fair. <laughs> That's why it's called grace. Next.